All right. Um, just pulling up my screen to share. Voy a compartir mi pantalla. There we go. All right. Lori, can you give me a an indication or Fabio that you can see the screen? Yes. Okay. Yes. Looks good. Great. All right. So welcome everyone. Bienvenidos Thank you for a... joining us today. Bienvenidos a todos. Gracias por estar con nosotros hoy. This is an informational webinar to discuss the Birth Through Five Literacy Grants. Esta es una sesión informativa para hablar sobre las becas desde el nacimiento hasta los cinco para programas de lectura. Okay, thank you, Fabio. And let's see, just going to reiterate that for this meeting, so it's informational, it will be recorded and posted onto the landing page where we will also share where the materials for this application are. Bueno, pues esto va a ser grabada toda la información y la vamos a compartir en el sitio donde van a estar todos los materiales disponibles para la solicitud y ya les diremos dónde. So, during the webinar, you won't have the opportunity to ask questions by coming off mute or in the chat. It's just to listen to the information. Durante el webinario no tendrán la opción de hacer preguntas, solamente podrán escuchar. Okay. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to move to the next slide, which is the agenda for today. Muy bien, voy a continuar a la siguiente diapositiva, que es la agenda para el día de hoy. So first we're going to talk about the single point of contact for the grant. Primero vamos a hablar sobre el punto de contacto único para la beca. Then we will do a overview of the Birth to Five Literacy Grants. Después vamos a ver una visión general de la beca desde el nacimiento hasta los cinco años de alfabetización. Then we will go over eligibility requirements. Después veremos los requerimientos de elegibilidad. And then we will do a brief overview of the um, RFA, which is the application for this grant. Después veremos un resumen del RFA, por sus siglas en inglés, que es un resumen de la solicitud para esta beca. And then we will close. Y después tendremos el cierre. All right. So, moving on to the next slide, I'll pass it to Lori. Oh, and I forgot to introduce myself. I'll do that. So I'm Emma Mauerman. I am the program manager for the Early Childhood Equity Fund with DELC. And I'll pass it over to Lori. Olvide presentarme. Soy Emma Mauerman de DELC. Eh, soy la persona encargada. Y ahora le voy a dar la palabra a Lori. Hello, everyone. My name is Lori Nordling. I am the single point of contact on this project. Uh, I am the procurement director at DELC. Hola a todos, soy Lori Nortlian. Soy la procuradora y soy el punto de contacto único para este programa. And here on the screen is my phone number to get a hold of me. Aquí en la pantalla aparece mi teléfono para que se pongan en contacto conmigo. And also my email address, if you would like to email me. También mi dirección de correo electrónico, si quieren escribirme por correo. So again, any questions, anything related to this project, please come to me. Si tienen alguna pregunta. Oh, we may have had Fabio cut out a little bit. Um, can you repeat that part, Fabio? Okay, I will right, we'll move forward. I think he, Fabio is having a little bit of connectivity issues and um, we thought we had them sorted, but um, if there's a break in the Spanish interpretation, um, we 
we will end up re-recording this webinar in Spanish. So we want to make sure it's accessible in both English and Spanish. All right, so I'm going to go to the next slide. This thing, there we go. All right. So, um, Lori, can you confirm, is Fabio still signed on? We just can't hear him. Uh, it looks like he has left. Okay. Okay. Well, I think he, he will likely be back, but... Um, we unfortunately will be switching to English unless he pops back on really soon. And like I said, then we will re-record in Spanish and also be posting that um, the Spanish version of this webinar. So moving forward, I wanted to um, start us out with an overview of the Birth Through Five Literacy Grants. And much of this information comes directly from the information provided in the application documents, but it's good to be able to share it here um, where you can hear it um, verbally and not have to search for it in the, in the array of documents that we have because they're very long. And so we wanna highlight the most important pieces to tune into. So I'm going to basically read these slides and you can read along with me. So this is an overview. So through the Birth Through Five Literacy Plan and use of the Birth Through Five Literacy Funds in accordance with HB 3198, DELC aims to award grants to current ESEF grantees. So ESEF is Early Childhood Equity Fund. So current ESEF grantees or similar organizations to close opportunity gaps for children and families who experience systemic disparities because of any combination of factors such as race, income, zip code, or language through funding of culturally specific organizations that are committed to providing early learning services rooted in culture, home language, and lived experience. I know that's a mouthful, so that was a very long sentence. Um, I'm glad it's on the screen so you can read through that again. So in furtherance of that goal, as described below, grantees must perform activities that carry out the purposes of the Birth Through Five Literacy Plan and that align with the outcomes and indicators that exist across kindergarten readiness and culturally specific parent and child support programs as described in HB 3198. So these include, but, but is not limited to, so these are the goals of the the grants. So this includes, but is not limited to increasing literacy for children from birth through five, reducing early literacy disparities for historically underserved student groups, increasing supports to parents and guardians to enable them to be full partners in the development of their children's literacy skill and knowledge development, and increasing access to early literacy support that is research-aligned, culturally responsive, student-centered, and family-oriented. It looks like Fabio joined again, so let's see if he's back. Just pausing for a second. Fabio, are you able to unmute if you're back? All right. Lori, do you see him in the in the list of attendees? Yes, I do. Okay. Is he, is he muted or unmuted? He is muted. Okay. Can you make sure can you see if you can click to unmute him? Yeah, let me see if I can do that. Cuz I want to make sure it, it wasn't turned off that he can't turn it back on since new participants are muted. Yeah, and you'll have to make him a host again. I can't. Okay. Him. I think it's working there. now. So okay. sorry about that, but I'm looking for the slide uh, uh, where you are right now. Yeah, that's okay. So this, we're on the first overview slide. Okay, yes. Did you go through it already? I did. Would you mind reading it in Spanish? Sure. And I, I will keep this one on the page. 
Thank you. Resumen del fondo de alfabetización desde el nacimiento hasta los cinco años. A través del plan de alfabetización desde el nacimiento hasta los cinco años y el uso de los fondos de alfabetización desde el nacimiento hasta los cinco años de acuerdo con la HB 3198 del CEM, DELC, tiene como objetivo otorgar subvenciones a los actuales beneficiarios del ECEF u organizaciones similares para cerrar las brechas de oportunidades para los niños y las familias que experimentan disparidades sistemáticas, sistémicas debido a cualquier combinación de factores como la raza, los ingresos, el código postal, el idioma mediante la financiación de organizaciones culturalmente específicas que están comprometidas a brindar servicios de aprendizaje temprano arraigados en la cultura, el idioma materno y la experiencia vivida. Para promover este objetivo, como se describe a continuación, los beneficiarios deben realizar actividades que lleven a cabo los propósitos del plan de alfabetización desde el nacimiento hasta los cinco años y que se alineen con los resultados e indicadores que existen en los programas de preparación para el jardín de infantes y de apoyo para padres e hijos culturalmente específicos, como se describe en la HB 3198. Esto incluye, entre otros, aumentar la alfabetización temprana de los niños desde el nacimiento hasta los cinco años, reducir las disparidades en la alfabetización temprana de los grupos de estudiantes históricamente desatendidos, aumentar el apoyo a los padres y tutores para permitirles ser socios plenos en el desarrollo de las habilidades de alfabetización y el desarrollo de conocimientos de sus hijos, y aumentar el acceso a un apoyo de alfabetización temprana que esté alineado con la investigación, sea culturalmente sensible, esté centrado en el estudiante y en la familia. All right, thank you, Fabio. I'm going to go to the next slide. All right, so this is a continuation from O. Oh, and it came up a little bit funny on this slide. I am not sure why. Okay, the formatting is a little bit off, but um, I think we'll still be able to understand it. So, oh, I'll pause for five. El formato está un poco diferente, pero creo que lo vamos a poder entender. Entonces vamos a, a seguir con la parte de la continuación del resumen de fondo de alfabetización. Okay. So this section talks about the allowable activities that potential grantees could do with these funds. Aquí esta diapositiva habla de las actividades posibles que los posibles beneficiarios pueden llegar a realizar. So for existing early childhood equity fund grantees, there are three different areas um, of programming that, or of uses that you could do with these funds. Hay tres diferentes áreas de utilización de recursos que pueden hacer uso de estos fondos. So the one at the top is in yellow, and that is because this first area um, for use of funds is one that new grantees who are not ESEF grantees won't be able to do. La parte que está en amarillo es para los beneficiarios nuevos que no van a poder hacer uso del ESEF. Ellos no van a poder hacer uso de estos recursos. So I've highlighted it to um, showcase the difference because the other two below are ones that both new and existing grantees will be able to do. Y lo puse así porque um, para destacar la diferencia y la parte de abajo es los que tanto nuevos como ya los existentes beneficiarios van a poder hacer. So that first one says um, existing ESEF grantees must build on and expand current ESEF activities to develop and or deliver early literacy resources and materials through ESEF funded parenting education and parent child interaction activities, enhance and or expand on existing literacy related activities.
Fabio, are you, are you there? Sure, yes. Los Okay. beneficiarios actuales del ISEF deben aprovechar y ampliar las actividades actuales del ISEF para desarrollar y o entregar recursos y materiales de alfabetización temprana a través de actividades de interacción entre padres e hijos y educación para padres financiados por el ECEF. Mejorar y o ampliar las actividades existentes relacionadas con la alfabetización. The next activity that the funds can be used for is develop and or deliver culturally relevant early literacy training and professional development activities for both early childhood and early grade educators, early grade, grade educators being defined as kindergarten through third grade providers and or other staff that would benefit from literacy training opportunities. El segundo punto o actividad que pueden hacer es desarrollar y o ofrecer actividades de desarrollo profesional y capacitación en alfabetización temprana culturalmente relevantes para educadores de educación temprana y de los primeros grados desde el jardín de infantes hasta el tercer grado. Proveedores y u otro personal que se beneficiaría de las oportunidades de And the third one is conduct community engagement activities to identify community specific gaps in early literacy activities to further inform the development of DELC's birth through five literacy program. Fabio, are you there? Oh, we may have lost him. Okay, so I'm going to continue in English and it seems like we might need to re-record. So I apologize for that. So the now this, this part where it says new applicants, that is not supposed to have a little bullet point in front of it. So that's where it gets confusing with the formatting. But there's a distinction between what existing ESEF grantees can do and what new applicants can do that meet the ESEF eligibility criteria but aren't currently ESEF grantees or receiving ESEF grant funds. So new applicants will be able to do the, the second and the third activity which is to develop and or deliver culturally relevant early literacy training and professional development activities for both early childhood and early grade educators, kindergarten through third grade providers and or other staff that would benefit from literacy training opportunities. And they may also conduct community engagement activities to identify community specific gaps in early literacy activities to further inform the development of DELC's birth through five literacy program. So the scope is a little bit nar narrower for new grantees who apply for the funds. The funds are being channeled through the Early Childhood Equity Fund, and there are already pre-established programs that grantees Um, in the equity fund are running. And so ESEF grantees are able to use the funds potentially um, if they're approved applicants for um, enhancing their ESEF funded programming. However, new grantees would be able to use it mainly for professional development and for community engagement. So that part I wanted to specifically highlight the difference in the allowable uses for existing early childhood equity fund grantees versus new applicants who are not currently receiving ESEF grant funds. All right, so just to expand a little bit more on that section, funds may be used for staffing only if approved by the agency and if the application for the grant articulates the need for a limited duration position and or articulates the ability to sustain that position with other funding sources. And that's because this, this grant is only for one 
year. So the funds last through the end of June, 2025. And so funding for staff um, only makes sense if it's able to um, be sustained another way after this these grant funds end or if um, or if it's a limited like one year duration period that that staff would be on board. So then for a couple non-allowable activities, grant funds may not be used for capital expenditures such as building new or remodeling facilities or to supplant existing federal or state funds. Next one is limitations on use of funds for staffing. Again, it reiterates the same piece, only acceptable if the plan articulates a need for a limited duration position and or ability to sustain with other funding sources. All right. So wanted to clarify those pieces since um, that will affect the proposal that you write in the application if you apply for the grant. All right, moving on to eligibility. Again, there's a weird formatting thing happening that didn't show up before I downloaded it, so I apologize. So for eligibility, there are numerous pieces um, for the criteria, and essentially because this grant is being funneled through the Early Childhood Equity Fund, new grantees would need to meet the eligibility criteria of the Early Childhood Equity Fund grant. And I want to highlight also that um, tribal nations don't need to apply to this RFA. They will be using a separate non-competitive process for funds. All right, so I'm going to talk about the eligibility. So the eligibility. So eligible applicants must meet the following criteria. So there's two sections. The first one is you either need to currently be receiving early childhood equity fund um, grants. So be an ESEF grantee. Um, so a grantee of DELC as and in good standing pursuant to a valid grant agreement. Or if you're a new prospective grantee applying, these are the um, three eligibility requirements that you would need to meet. So you would need to be a culturally specific organization or operate a culturally specific early learning program within Oregon's borders, demonstrate experience providing outreach, support, and resources to children and families who experience systemic disparities, provide outreach, support, and resources to children and families who experience systemic disparities because of two or more of the following factors. So either race, ethnicity, English language proficiency, socioeconomic status, geographic location, and the last one that didn't get separated out, and have people in leadership positions in the organization that belong to the culturally community, the cultural community served. So those come straight from the Early Childhood Equity Fund eligibility criteria. So any new applicants would need to meet that eligibility. I'm gonna move to the next one, which is an overview of the request for applications for this grant. And Lori will be covering that part. Okay, thank you, Emma. The due date for submission is August 2nd at 5 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. Uh, the questions and requests for clarifications are due tomorrow, which is Thursday, July 11th by 5 p.m. DELC will be posting our responses to the questions and clarifications on July 15th. So going over the document itself, the request for application document, I, I want to point out a few things, such as section 2.3 will give you the overview and background for this project. Section 2.4 lists the scope of activities. 
Again, this will list the allowable and non-allowable activities. Section 2.5 are the program requirements. Section 3.1 is the grant process. And here is a link to our website to download the documents. Section 3.1.2 of the RFA is the process on how you would submit your questions, requests for clarification. And those again would be submitted to me, the single point of contact. Section 3.2, you might have already noticed this, but we have uh, mislabeled, misnumbered uh, this section. It should be 3.2.1. And this talks about the application submission process. And it will walk you through what you need to do. Next slide. On section 3.2, the application requirements, this section will match the fillable PDF forms that you will be filling out either in English or Spanish. So section 3.2 will, will match the forms that you will be downloading either in English or Spanish, and they are in PDF and they are fillable forms. Section 3.2.6 is the budget. This is located as attachment D you must fill this out and submit along with your fillable PDF form. Those are the two items you need to submit for this uh, request for application. Section 4.2 of the RFA will talk about the evaluation criteria. This will walk you through how the evaluators are going to evaluate your response. Section 4.3, talks about the point and score calculations, and it explains the scoring methodology that will be used by the evaluation committee that will be uh, reviewing your responses. Section 5.1 is your award notification process. Section six is additional information. Nothing that we really need to go over here. It's all templated language. Section seven is the list of attachments on the RFA. And one of the attachments is uh, the grant agreement. That's going to be attachment A. On the grant agreement itself, the very first pages of the agreement are the terms and conditions that will list the length of the agreement, the compensation of the agreement, regular terms and conditions. Exhibit A of the grant agreement will list the project. And that also, as it lists the project, it includes the activities, the requirements, the costs, and the reporting requirements. And that, again, can be found on Exhibit A. Exhibit B of the grant document is your required insurance. So if you are awarded a grant, you must have a certificate that you can send to us of the insurance requirements. The last exhibit on the grant agreement is Exhibit C, and that is equi our equity objectives and result expectations document. And this document goes in all of our grants and all of our contracts. Okay, so the EC at ECEF landing page is where these documents are posted. And that's everything. Anything else that you wanted to include, Emma? I think that covers it. So I I do apologize for the the technical issues with the Spanish translation, Fabio, if you're here, we're just going to plan to um, re-record in Spanish. And so thank you all so much for attending. Um, you may submit questions. If you have lingering questions after viewing this, um, please review the RFA documents that contain Lori Nordlane's 
contact information, and also maybe you took note of them during the presentation. This will also be posted on the Early Childhood Equity Fund landing page that you can find through going to the Department Early Learning and Care site, so the DELC website. You can find Early Childhood Equity Fund on that page, and then these documents are posted at the bottom of that page. And Lori's contact information, again, will be in this recorded webinar and is also found on the RFA documents themselves. So thank you so much for attending, and I hope you have a wonderful day.